Welcome back. 17 people have been killed after a bomb went off outside a hotel near the international airport in the Somali capital, Mogadishu. Sam Mpuzi is standing by with the rest of Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. Hong Kong is in shock after a night of violence which saw dozens of masked men storm a train station. The men, dressed in white shirts and suspected to be triad gangsters, assaulted pro-democracy protesters and passers-by in the Yun Long area. Footage posted on social media shows dozens of men attacking people with wooden rods and metal sticks inside the station. 45 people were injured, with one person in a critical condition. Several lawmakers questioned why police were slow to arrive at the scene, hinting that authorities may have been on the same side as the so-called triad gangsters. It's heart-wrenching in a supposedly safe city uh, called Hong Kong. The uh, more, more than apparent collusion between the police and the triads. We absolutely do not condone that sort of violent acts. And I, let me make this clear again, violence is not a solution. Audio has been released between a British warship and an Iranian patrol boat to warn against interfering with a British flagged tanker. After your course, two, uh, three, six, zero degrees immediately, over. You must not impair, impede, obstruct or hamper the passage of the MV Stena Imperio. Iran's Revolutionary Guards seized the tanker with a crew of 23 on Friday as it passed through the Strait of Hormuz. Iran's Fars news agency said the country's Revolutionary Guards had taken control of the ship after it collided with an Iranian fishing boat. However, the British Foreign Secretary has said the capture of the vessel is illegal and part of a wider tit-for-tat spat between the countries. The head of the global nuclear watchdog, Yukiai Amano, has died at the age of 72. He has led the International Atomic Energy Agency since 2009 and was due to step down in March because of an unspecified illness. During his tenure, he had overseen a period of tense negotiations regarding Iran's nuclear program. It is not yet clear who will succeed him, though discussions over his replacement began last week. Kenya's finance minister has surrendered himself to police after the chief prosecutor ordered his arrest over allegations of corruption. Henry Rotich is accused of flouting procurement procedures in awarding a contract worth over $450 million for the construction of two dams to the Italian company CMC de Ravenna. In March, Mr. Rotich denied any wrongdoing in a large newspaper advert. The company has also denied the accusations. Voting for the UK's next Conservative leader and Prime Minister has closed, with the winner due to be announced on Tuesday morning. Conservative Party members have been voting for either the Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, or Boris Johnson, with the latter widely expected to take the top job. Earlier, Sir Alan Duncan quit as a Foreign Office Minister in protest against a possible Boris Johnson victory. In his resignation letter, he described Brexit as a dark cloud. The Chancellor, Philip Hammond, and Justice Secretary David Gork have already said they intend to resign if he wins. Israel has begun demolishing a cluster of Palestinian homes it says were built illegally too close to the separation barrier in the occupied West Bank. Security forces moved in to East Jerusalem to tear down buildings said to house 17 people. Residents said they had been given permits to build by the Palestinian Authority and accused Israel of an attempt to grab West Bank land. But Israel's Supreme Court ruled that they had violated a construction bank. Palestinians fear that the raising of the homes near the fence will set a precedent for other towns along the route of the barrier, which runs for hundreds of kilometres around and through the Israeli-occupied West Bank. The French Navy has found the wreckage of its Minerve submarine, which disappeared in the Mediterranean Sea in 1968. Fifty-two sailors were on board when it vanished near the port of Toulon in January of that year. Previous efforts to find the submarine were all unsuccessful. The government decided in 2018 to renew efforts to find the Minerve following requests from the bereaved families and found it thanks to the use of new sonar and drone technology. And finally, India has launched a rocket into space in a bid to perform a soft landing of a rover on the moon. 
The rocket carrying the unmanned Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft blasted off from a southern Indian space center to cheers from onlookers. The $146 million mission, if successful, will enable India to carry out studies on the presence of water on the south pole of the moon. Only the United States, Russia and China have been to the moon before. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thanks a lot, Simon. To sports now, here's Ayo Tunde Balogun. Many thanks to Madrigal, Golden Stars, Adamawa United, Aqua Starlets and Warrior Wolves have gained promotion to the Nigeria Professional Football League after they all won their NNL promotion matches. At the Joss End Centre, Jigawa edged NAF FC 3-2, Adamawa beat Road Safety 2-1 in Makadi, and Aqua Thrash Shooting Stars 3-0 in Asaba. Africa's highest ranked table tennis star Aaron Okodri is impressed with his performance so far this season. After recovering from injury in February, he says after a successful outing for his club, his focus is to qualify Nigeria for the 2020 Olympics at the Africa Games in Morocco. Cristiano Ronaldo won't face criminal charges after a woman accused him of raping her at the Las Vegas Strip Resort in 2009. The prosecutor Steve Wolfson said in a statement Monday that after reviewing a new police investigation, he determined that sexual assault accusations can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt and no charges will be filed. And that's a wrap in Sports News. It's back to you, Ijoma. Thanks a lot, Ayo Tunde. And the main news again. A clash between police and members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria today in Abuja left several persons dead. Also today, a youth corps member serving with Channel's television, Precious Owolabi, died from a stray bullet during the clash between members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria and the police. The management of Channel's television regret the death of such a young and promising journalist. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Ijo Maunyato. Good evening.